Hello, everyone. Very excited to be bringing you another episode of Tank Talk. It is bright and early Monday morning. If you're listening to this on the day of upload, I hope you had a wonderful weekend and you're ready to start off the week with some talk about hang on the back filters. I am enjo- I'm joined today, like I always am for this podcast now, by the professor, Jason Adams. Welcome, my friend. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be hanging out with you and everybody else today. We have, yeah, we've got a great topic to hang on back filter. It seems like a rather simple conversation, a rather simple topic with hang on back filters. But when you really dive, when you really dive down deep, there's a lot to talk about here. There's lots of different brands. There's lots of different features. So yeah, let's, I mean, we are going to have, I think, a, a, a really thorough conversation when it comes to the hang on back filter. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't think that you could talk for an hour about it, uh, but if you, if you know anything about the professor and I, uh, you know that we can talk for gra- about grass for an hour. So <laughs> we have to cut ourselves off when we're having talk when we're talking just about whatever, because it's like, hey, wait a minute, we don't want to talk about that because we're going to end up being here for an hour and a half. We have to cut ourselves off. But yeah, this is a, it's a more complex, uh, you know. I, I, topic than people might think because there is a lot involved it's not as simple as it was back in the day i mean way early on hang on the back filters were more simple than they are now they're still very simple devices but they've evolved a lot over the years and uh, over the decades and when we get to the end i'm gonna i'm gonna surprise jason by putting him on the spot and asking him what his favorite brand of hang on the back filters are and if you want this partnership to continue you better answer that properly <laughs> oh i've got opinions don't you worry i, have I know opinions. you do i've watched <laughs> a lot of your videos on youtube about hang on the backs and and i consider those videos to be a, a valuable resource to anybody that's interested in yeah. hang on the backs um if, especially if you're interested in them in video form um I've done quite a few myself and I've used hang on the back filters my entire time keeping glass boxes full of water. So Mm -hmm. I consider myself not an expert, but well-versed in the topic. And the the first thing that I want to say about them, maybe you disagree, but I, I don't think you will. I think hang on back filters are the most commonly used filters in the aquarium hobby. How do you feel about that? Without a doubt, uh, when you compare all the other air driven systems, canister filters, both internal, external, hang on back filters are by far the number one thing. And I think part of the reason why is when you look at even the aquarium starter kits, right? When you look at those standard anywhere from 10 gallon up to your 55 gallon aquariums that you get at the at the big box stores. Guess what? Almost all of them are coming with some type of hang on back filter. So. It's, it's just what most people, I think, are exposed to early on in the aquarium hobby. Yeah, if you think about sponge filters, we both know that sponge filters are very efficient. They work very well. Um, but if you look at it from the standpoint of the brand new fish keeper that is setting up their first aquarium, everything's brand new, you would think that such a simple concept of hooking up an airline to a sponge filter would be an absolute no brainer, but you'd be surprised how many people look at that and they're like, wait a minute, what What are you talking about? You, air? What? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. Um, and this is why, like you said, the starter kits, I, I think starter kits almost exclusively come with hang on the backs. It doesn't matter if it's a, um, a Marine Land or an Aquion or whatever brand it is. Now, there are some that... Uh, like your your fluval kits and the all-in-one units where the filtration is built into the tank. Obviously, those don't have hang on the backs, but I mean, really, they, they kind of are. They're just built in. Uh, but it is a very easy, very efficient way to filter an aquarium. Now, you know, we don't need to spend much time on this, but when you get into the big aquariums, I think me personally, I think when you're at 150 gallons, you've kind of reached that level where it's time to start thinking about something else. Yeah. 125s, I think, even though it's only 25 gallons smaller, I think you can get away with 
what I would do, which would be two reasonably sized hang on the back filters. Um, but when you go over 125, when you get into the 150s and stuff like that, you, you got to start talking about something else because you're just getting to that area where hang on the back filters are great. They're very efficient, but I don't think they're going to be great enough to keep up with something like that. But yeah, totally we're, we're agree. Talk, I, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. You go. This is your show too. Uh, go ahead. I agree when it comes to the size of the aquarium, you can run hang on back filters anywhere from as small as a two and a half gallon tank. I've run them up to 150 gallons, even on the tall, the, the 30 inch, 150 gallon aquarium. They do struggle a little bit there. And part of the reason they struggle is the fact that their intakes aren't quite long enough like you'd get on some of the better canister filters or certainly a sump system. So there are limitations, but I think the reason why they are so popular, especially amongst beginners and seasoned fish keepers alike, one of the primary reasons is, and this is going to be a controversial statement. I'm going to tell you this right now. There's going to be people who disagree with us or me in stating this. I still think, and I will always maintain, that maintaining a hang on back filter is the easiest type of filter to deal with. And I'm including all the air driven systems. I'm including the canisters. Obviously, I'm including sumps. The hang on back filter, all you have to do to maintain that thing, all we do every single week. And again, we, we've got to put this in perspective for both you and I. We've got combined, we've got a lot of aquariums. I mean, just in our, our fish gallery and fish room alone, there's still 50 up and running. And a lot of them have hang on back filters. It is so easy to walk over to the back of your tank, pull that little basket out, or even if it doesn't have a basket, grab the filter floss, grab the sponge, change it out, clean it up, right back in it goes. I understand that a sponge filter is also easy to do, but this is even easier because you're not even getting your elbows wet with a hang on back right. filter. You're just taking it out, putting it in a bucket, replacing it, done. It took three seconds. Even with the sponge filter, as simple as that is, you still have to remove the air holes, take the sponge out, bring it over to a sink, wash it off, connect all that stuff back together. So one huge advantage of the hang on back filter is the fact that it is magnificently simple to clean and maintain. No, that's that's 100 percent true. Uh, I am a believer in it is impossible. And I've maintained thousands of sponge filters when we had our shop and we had 300 aquariums in our shop, all of them. Well, not all of them, but all of the the for sale tanks, the tanks that had fish in them that were for sale were all run by sponge filters because that is the most efficient way to do it when you have a huge system like that. So I've maintained thousands of sponge filters. Never once have I ever done one that didn't foul up the entire aquarium. I don't Absolutely. care what system you use of using bags to put them in and stuff like that. You can be as careful as you want. As soon as you touch that sp sponge filter, poof, you've got stuff going out. So I agree completely. Yeah, you'll get a little bit of debris in the tank too when you maintain a hang on the back filter. Uh, really, there's no way to maintain an aquarium without stirring things up. Uh, but I completely agree. It is the easiest way you can... You can do it by just getting the tips of your fingers wet. You don't have to mess around, pull your sleeve up, get all the way down in there. And it's very, very simple. Uh, but they're also maybe not as easy as sponge filters, but they're very easy to assemble and install. It's as simple as put it on the back of the tank, hook up the, the intake, and you're done. I mean, yeah. you know, you don't get a whole lot more easy than that. Put a couple of cups of water in it, depending on what style filter it is. We'll talk about that. And uh, and, and you're off and running. Plug it in. You're good to go. So, yeah, I mean, technically no, speaking, it has one less, yeah, it, technically speaking, it has one less thing to set up, right? Instead of putting plugging a pump in and running the airline, all you're doing is plugging in that filter. Make sure your meat is in there. Boom, done. So it takes all of about. I don't know, 35, 45 seconds to get that thing up and running. Yeah, I, I did a series a few years ago where I went through and I reviewed all of the brands, of, well, not all of them, but like six brands of hang on back filters. Uh, I bought all of those filters. Nobody sent them to me. Nobody bought my opinion. Um, one of the first things I said about every single one of them, Aquion, Tetra, Whisper, Fluval, Seachem, Marineland. One of the first things I said was easy to install, every single one of them. Uh, you don't have to have a degree in engineering to put one of these things together and, and get it running on your tank. So they're very efficient, very efficient, about as efficient as you can get for small aquariums. Uh, they're easy to install. 
easy to maintain. And this is something that maybe not all of them are, but they're also very quiet. And to some people that doesn't matter, but to me, it's very important. I do not want a lot of noise coming from my aquariums. I know a lot of people like that trickling water sound and that's fine. It makes me have to pee. I like it to be nice and quiet and hang on the back filters are as long as you don't let the water get low, then you got a nice little waterfall going on in there. But, uh, but yeah, the, the units themselves are very quiet. Maybe not as quiet as canister filters, but they're even more quiet than sponge filters because with sponge filters, you have those bubbles coming up, which that's not a bad sound, but that is a sound nonetheless. Absolutely. And it, it, a lot of people ask about when it comes to hang on back filters, oh, you know, especially if you're comparing them to other types, is there enough space in the back of a hang on back filter to properly filter an aquarium? And my response to that is, and if you're watching us in the podcast, you won't be able to see this, but for those of you on YouTube, behind John's head is, what did you say the tank was? Eight feet by three feet by three? Two feet. Is that what it two. is? Two feet. It's, okay. Yeah. So what is that in terms of gallons? Is that 280, 300? What is that? 360. 360. Sorry. Okay. So imagine a 360 gallon tank with a few Oscars, a, a Beicher or two, and it looks like there's a Severum back there. And um, two Severums, okay. I'm so correcting, I'm Jason. There's three bikers, two Severums, three Oscars, and a two-foot-long common pleco. Okay, now here's something that I'm going to say that's shocking, but it's absolutely true from a scientific perspective. That aquarium, I'm assuming you've got some canister filters on there. I have a massive so, filtration system. Okay, even better. Even better for that size aquarium. 3,600 gallons per hour. Now here's... In terms of filtration, if you were the, the the primary thing, and I'm going to make a point here about the hang on back filter having more than enough capacity. If the, the filter is rated for the tank, it has more than enough biological filtration capacity. Because even in that large tank that John has, 360 gallons that has some really big, heavy bio load fish in there. If I had three fully cycled large sponge filters like the Hydro Fives or something like that, and I put them in there, that's all you need for biological filtration to make sure that the microbes are converting ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. That is it. That is all I would need long-term to filter that aquarium because you'd have the beneficial microbes in the sponge filters and on every surface in that aquarium that's exposed to oxygen. So keeping that in mind, and I mean, I have, I have filtered and you, I'm sure with your pet store, when you had tanks that were heavily stocked, you could throw a sponge filter in that tank Obviously, we're not talking about keeping fish long term in this environment. But when you're talking about retail, when you're talking about quarantine, when you're talking about wholesale, you could take a, a, a smaller size sponge filter, throw that in a 29 with 400 neon tetras and never have an ammonia or nitrite spike, provided that that tank and that filter has beneficial bacteria that is colonized to the extent that they need to for that bio load. So when it comes to hang on back filters, then. If that hang on back filter is, is rated for your size aquarium from a biological filtration perspective, I promise you it has more than enough space. That is not necessarily saying that it has enough mechanical filtration capacity, which is why you've got the sump on that massive tank. Because I promise you, if I put three sponge filters on that massive tank behind you, it would look not great. There'd be mm -hmm. stuff floating around in the water because it doesn't have the ability to suck the 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 stuff out of the water column like your sump does with that with what I'm assuming is a pretty sizable motor but hang on back filters absolutely have that capacity yeah you know uh, I actually I have to rebut what you said a little bit because it, it's probably the only uh, if I was to have a gripe about this style aquarium that's behind me my 360 I also have three 240s that are this way the the overflows is all done by gravity and they're all up top when you've mm -hmm. got bangers in the tank like i do that have human size poops that <laughs> fall down there isn't enough force to get those up and and into the overflows uh, a lot of it does but there is a lot of the debris from fish that does settle down in the gravel uh with those fish, not even the most powerful hang on the back filter or canister filter with the intake all the way down on the bottom is going to suck all that in. It's just impossible. Uh, but 
you're absolutely 100% correct. It would be worse, way worse, if all we had in there is sponge filters. I'm a fan of sponge filters. I like them. But in a situation like I have with all of my big tanks, with big, heavy-hitting fish in there, a sponge filter is not going to help me out with managing the the debris and all of that kind of stuff. And that's a perfect lead-in to what my next question for you, my good friend, was going to be. Let's say you are a fish keeper that bought, you're, you're new to this, and you bought a filter, or excuse me, an aquarium complete setup used from somebody off of Craigslist is, I don't even know if that's still a thing, but today we would say Facebook Marketplace or a friend or wherever you got this used one and it came with a sponge filter or it was from your grandpa and it came with an under gravel filter. When should a fish keeper entertain the idea of what I would consider and I think you would consider an upgrade from a sponge filter or under gravel filter? to a hang on the back filter. When do you know you need to make that move? So this is, again, this is going to be something that might be shocking to a lot of people because when you look at my fish room and when we had 80 aquariums, every aquarium had sponge filters. And so I think people naturally assumed I'm team sponge filter. I love sponge filters. They're the greatest things in the world. They're the absolute number one awesome filter. And I actually don't think that at all. In fact, I think they're one of the worst filters for a lot of setups. They were great for my setup. They were great for, you know, if you're breeding fish and things like that, but for just filtering an aquarium, actually I, they, they are one of my least preferential filters out there bar none. So to answer your question, if I'm a fish keeper and I only have one, two, three, four, maybe five aquariums, I'm, I'm still in the single digits. Every one of those aquariums provided, like you said earlier, that it's not a huge monster aquarium. They're all getting hang on back filters. If you were to go back really early, I think I might have a couple of videos where I show the one side of the fish room when there still was only about 10 tanks on that side before I had the air system built out on both sides. And they were all hang on back filters. And the reason for that is, one, I don't want to look at my filtration in the aquarium. And so a hang on back filter, you're only getting the intake. Uh, two, you're getting way better flow. Uh, three, you're getting far, far, far superior me mechanical filtration. And even the, if you're worried about fry or shrimp or something small, put an intake sponge over the hang on back, right? O right? Over the intake. And that problem is solved just like it would be with any other type of filtration. So I would say to that person, first of all, if you like the sponge filter and you don't mind the way that it looks and you're okay dealing with the downsides, some of the downsides to that, leave it alone. You don't need to you don't need to convert to any other type of filtration, especially in a smaller aquarium. But that, that would always be my go-to for an appropriately sized aquarium, anywhere from two and a half gallons up to, like you said, about 125. And even in our four foot 150, hang on back filters. It was always, it's what we use because of the reasons we've already mentioned. Yeah. I, I get asked this question, as I'm sure you do. And my answer is, is always the same. If you have, like you did and like I did, multiple aquariums, it is a very efficient way to filter all of the aquariums from one large, uh, whether it's a you know blower or some kind of large pump that is supplying air to all of those tanks. Uh, the drawback is you know you you you're not able to really install any kind of water changing system. Um, you know, I, I think one of the best ways of doing it is having a recirculating system, but then people would make the argument of you're spreading disease, blah, 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 mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. If you have multiple tanks, and when I say multiple, I mean like over a dozen, and they're small tanks and you're raising fry, a sponge filter rack is the way to go. But the way I answer that question is, if I'm setting up an aquarium, if I am John, I don't have relationships with CJ and Fluval and Seachem and all, I'm just on my own and I'm setting up any size aquarium, 10 gallon, 20, 29, 55, 75, all the way up to 125, I'm putting a hang on the back filter on those. When I get to a 125, I'm probably going to go with two, um, you know, not two of the biggest, but two of, you know, where it's going to maybe maybe be double, you know, it's going to be appropriate to filter 250 gallons. So I guess that would be two of the, of the yeah. biggest, but 
that's how I'm going to do it. So if, if that answers your, if that doesn't answer your question, I don't know what will. If I'm setting up for my grandson a 20 gallon tank for his birthday, I'm not putting a sponge filter in there. I'm putting a nice little hang on the back filter. We can talk about brands and stuff later. Uh, I'm going to put that on there because I know it's going to end up being his mom that has to maintain it. And it's going to be very easy for her to go in there, pull out that cartridge, put the new cartridge in, and we're good to go. Maybe, you know, once every three, four months, pull it off, swish it around, dump all the debris out of the box of the filter. Very easy to maintain. It's not going to give you any problems. And it's going to make life so much easier. And yeah, like you said, maybe a little on the controversial side, but it's going to do a better job than sponge filters will too. 100%. And you just brought up a really, really good point when it comes to oh. pretty much any time, whether we're talking about air driven systems or especially hang on backs. I don't know what the cutoff is for you, but for me, a four foot tank gets two. So if we're talking about sponge filters, it's getting one on each side. If we're talking about hang on backs, it's getting one on each side. Because one of the problems I think a lot of people run into is regardless of the filter type that they choose, if it's improperly placed, they just said, oh, I've got a 55 gallon, put my hang on back right in the middle. You wind up with dead zones, which is somewhat what you're talking about in your, in your larger aquariums on the bottom right. there. But you wind up with these dead zones where there's lack of water flow, lack of you know, water circulation. And then you run into issues. You run into uh, detritus that's building up in the substrate. You wind up, and sometimes if that stays there long enough, you start seeing that white fungus kind of floating up from the substrate. Mm -hmm. uh, increased amounts of green hair algae or just algae in general that really likes that lower flow environment. So I always tell people, even in my 40-gallon breeders that are three-foot tanks, if I'm running sponge filters, they've always got two. But Normally, I'm running a larger hang on back filter in one of those if I have to. And so it's it's large enough where the flow is pretty extreme. But four foot tank, 100% of the time, I'm running filters on either side. And then, oh, by the way, I'm also running two heaters that are linked to an external temperature controller. And then those heaters are right next to the returns of the hang on backs and the water circulating all at the same temperature, nice and uniform. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree, except... When, when we're talking about four gallon tank, four gallons, four foot tanks, I don't go with two. I go with one of the biggest size. Mm. Um, and I've found that to work for me. But it also depends on what's in that four foot tank. Great example. I've got a 75 sitting right next to me over here that has three fancy goldfish in it and a couple of white clouds. I use an Emperor 450 on that. Yeah. I mean, goldfish produce a lot of waste. Um, I actually, I, I, it's supposed to have an FX2 on it, but that's a long story. Um, it's going to have this FX2 on it again, but temporarily it does have a hang on the back and it's only one, but it's the biggest one that's made for a tank significantly larger than a 75. But I, I do like the idea of even when it is a four gallon, 40, why am I struggling so much when it's a four <laughs> foot wide tank? You, you, that is a lot of room to spread that current through so having it from both sides uh, i do think is critical but another strategy could be one large one with something to circulate that water through whether that be a power head or another internal canister filter may i suggest the shark pro or a circulation pump or something like that uh, can can give the same effect that what you're saying but you know what if you got it in the budget put two daggone hang on the back filters on there and have the best of both worlds. I, I totally agree on that. Um, so somebody has decided they're, they're setting up a new tank uh, and they want they're, they've decided they're going to go hang on the backs. I want to talk about things that, that they should consider. We've already kind of touched on some and we're going to rehash some, but what are some of the things that they should consider? The first thing in, in my opinion is the size of that hang on the back filter. I don't know about you. I always tell people, if you can afford it, go one size up from what your aquarium asks for. So uh, a great example, the Seachem Title 55. T the titles have made it very easy. The number of the filter is how many gallons it supports. So a Title 55 is made for a 55 gallon tank. You would think that's a natural fit for a 55 gallon aquarium and it is but i would still put a 75 on there 
uh, just because you it's a little bit bigger, you have more options. It, you can always turn it down. You don't have to have it on full strength. And you're gonna have that extra in case your fish breed, you have a increase in bio load, you're, you're gonna be able to, hit, at least that's my philosophy. You're the professor, you could say, tell me I'm wrong, but that's how I feel about it, always one step up. And the thing is, particularly with the titles, to go from a 55 to a 75, it's not like it's a $50 jump in price. It's just a few dollars more. Go with the 75. If you are if you have a marine land and you're going to use the 250, jump up to the 350. Get that extra mm -hmm. cartridge in there. You know, it, it just gives you so many more options. And uh, that's, the, that's what I tell people. Size matters. Don't mean to be weird, but go one step bigger. Or like you said, you know, go... Go with the regular size, but double up on it if you can afford that. And that's exactly what I do. So I tend, it's, it's more expensive, no doubt about it. So uh, your way is definitely more cost efficient. So if I had a 55 gallon aquarium, I'm putting two Tidal 55s on there just because again, it's it's a four foot tank. I really love maximizing the, the potential for flow on either side of the aquarium. I also like the redundancy. So if something should ever happen, something gets caught in the impeller, a motor burns out, I still have one filter because you, you mentioned something else. Yeah, the size of the aquarium obviously matters. So whether you go a size up, like John is suggesting, or you do the more expensive route, which is some usually the way I would go if I was running hang on back filters, I would use the, the size of the, the filter that is appropriate for that tank, but then double them up on four foot or over. The Certainly those are options, but the other thing that you briefly touched on is the bio load of the aquarium because if we take our 55 gallon example, you could theoretically have an Mbuna tank. So the Mbuna are cichlids from Africa, Lake Malawi, and these are heavy bioload fish. They don't get super huge, right? So if you if you kept, I know you've got a tank with yellow labs and uh, maybe you do some Pseudotrophia psilocyte and maybe you've got some, uh, just, just some of the smaller, less aggressive Mbuna, but you're still gonna wanna overstock that tank. You're still gonna have a heavy bioload. You're still gonna have a situation where you probably have 15 to 18 fish that love to eat in that aquarium. And so even if you did a filter that is, is for, right, it's spec for the aquarium, like a Title 55 or a Marineland uh, 275 or something like that. It's again, when we're talking about mechanical filtration, getting the stuff out of the water, it, it's going to have a little bit harder time than if you run a, a size up like a Seachem Title 75 or Marineland Pro 375 or run duplicates, right? So tank size matters for sure. Bio load matters for sure. Yeah, the filtration you put on a 55 gallon tank that has four angelfish in it is going to be vastly different than if it has, you know, three dozen yellow labs in it for sure. Now, here's my question um, to you because you just brought up an insanely great example with those two fish. Besides the bio load, what's the other major difference? I'm going to put you on the spot, right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you really are a professor. I didn't know this was test day. Uh, well, <laughs> It could be, you know, when we're talking about the example of uh, angels versus Mbunas, plants, uh, to me, would impact how much filtration needs to be in there. I automatically assume when we're talking angelfish, we're talking about a heavily planted aquarium. That would come into my mind as something that uh, is going to help out with the filtration of the tank. Another reason, in my opinion, of being able to get by with one filter um, I don't know if that's what you were looking for. I don't know if I passed the it, test, but that's that's what I would go it's with. It's certainly one of them, absolutely, because that was one of the things I was thinking about. The other thing too is think about the fish itself, right? Your Mbuna are streamlined. They're gonna they're gonna be zipping around. They love that flow. Oh, they sure. love that yeah. flow. And for you, for someone who keeps, I don't know, how many bettas do you keep these days? It's, uh, all of them. <laughs> it's an insane amount, right? I know that you and Lisa have got all those bettas. Imagine putting a betta in a 20 gallon aquarium, which is a perfectly appropriately sized aquarium. And you've got a Seachem title 55 and they're going full blast. Yep. <laughs> it would be a yep. disaster. The fish would, you would not have that fish after we could be hiding in the corner, wouldn't be able to eat. And then eventually it would be no more. Mm -hmm. But if you did that with, uh, some type of, ra uh, maybe not raspberry is not a good example, but some streamlined fish, a brilliant green raspberry as a pretty, pretty nice sized torpedo shaped fish. They're like, this is awesome, man. This is the best right. thing I've ever seen in my life. Yep. Right. So it's 
it's the size of the aquarium. It's the bio load. It is the the type of fish that you're you're thinking about adding. If they're inactive, long fin, fancy guppies, bettas, yeah. you don't want to be whipping them around the tank. Lisa and I did that uh, one time. We had a, a tank, a 75 gallon tank. It's actually right down here from me that had a bunch of community type fish in it that we had a small, it was a fluval something 07. I don't remember what the, the canister was on it. And it was perfectly fine. Well, she converted that tank into being a beta sorority. I say beta, you say beta. We all know you're the one that says it right, but I can't change it in my head. When, we'll just when, compromise on beta. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'll just call them fighters. Uh, the community fish that were in there were perfectly fine. Everything was great with the filtration that was in there. It never really clicked with us like, oh, we should change the filtration when we switched it over to the betas. But as soon as we put the betas in there, they were getting blown around all over the place by that <laughs> filtration. The, the community fish weren't. There was a bunch of rasboras and tetras and things like that in it, and maybe even a couple angelfish. Um, they were all perfectly fine. Angels don't like a huge current, but I guess they found the right areas in the tank to hang out and that didn't have that current. But we never real, realized how much of a current there was from that filter until we put the betas in there and we would see them like swim by and then all of a sudden get thrown up into the front glass. It's like, oh, we need to make a change with that filtration. So, yeah, I mean, th that is for sure uh, something to think about. And a perfect lead in to the next thing to think about, which I don't even know if this is a real topic to bring up because I don't know if such a filter exists that does not have this but flow control. Yes. If, if you have a hang on the back filter that does not have flow control, it's not worth your money. Now, hmm. I will say some flow controls are better than others. Um, Without a doubt. I'm not going to name names, but I'm going to name names eventually. <laughs> there are some where the flow control is, is almost like, uh, like it's not even existent. Uh, but yeah. then there's others where you turn the dial and it goes whoosh. Yep. So flow control is absolutely critical. And not only because of exactly what we're talking about here, you end up, you know, you're, you've been experimenting and you end up landing on angelfish, one of the most majestic fish in this hobby. You want that fish to be happy because then it's going to flourish and it's going to all of those long flowy things. I don't know what they're called that are dangling around. I just call them dangly things. You want those to be in full display. And if that fish is getting blown around all over the place and you have a hang on the back that has good flow control on it, you can turn that down and it's not going to be blowing them around. But here's my question for you. Two questions. How important is flow control? And secondly, how much of an impact does it have on the efficiency of that filter if you turn it down? And I'm not talking about turning it down all the way, but what kind of an impact does it have? And is that even more of a reason to go with the double filters, you would think that's kind of counterproductive because now all of a sudden you're dealing with two major water flows, but two that are turned down, maybe that is more efficient. What, what are your thoughts? Okay, so flow control, there are two things in a hang on back filter that are 100% must have for me when I'm purchasing a filter. One is flow control, the other is an internal pump, which we'll get to later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Flow control is, like I said, for all the reasons we've talked about, 100%, it is a must because I want my hang on back filter to be as versatile as it possibly can be. So no matter what type of fish I'm putting in there, I want to be able to dial in the flow for that fish. Now, you mentioned a more interesting point, and that is, does the flow control, especially when you turn it down, have an impact on the filtration capacity? Well, there are, there's three types of filtration. You've got biological you have mechanical and you have chemical filtration. So your chemical filtration is like your activated carbon, your pyrogen. That's a, that's a separate conversation. It, it, we'll probably do a whole episode just on that. We will. Um, now, if you turn the flow down or you adjust the flow in some way, obviously the, the slower the flow, the less mechanical filtration it's going to have because the less water is contacting the, the media to get, you know, if there's stuff in the water, detritus, uh, st stuff that's floating there's less contact with that media, so less is going to get trapped. So obviously there's gonna be an inversely proportional amount of mechanical filtration relative to your flow, or proportional, I should say. 
But the biological filtration, a lot of people ask, well, if let's take a scenario, let's take two scenarios where you've got that sea chem title 55 and it is just blasting water all over your 20 gallon aquarium full force. The water is moving through that filter very, very quickly. And you've got beneficial bacteria on all of those surfaces, all over your filter media, all over your aquarium surfaces. People worry that if the water is moving very, very quickly, do the microbes have a chance to capture the ammonia and nitrite that the fish or the ammonia that the fish are producing and eventually the nitrite that some microbes are producing? Can they do the conversion? Can they do that denitr or that nitrification process? The answer is yes. Because even though the the food source for those microbes is moving very quickly across the surface, they're also being exposed to more water volume more quickly. On the flip side, what if you turn that down significantly? Well, now, yeah, it's true. The microbes are not being exposed to the same amount, the concentration of, or, or, or just the sheer volume of ammonia and nitrite, but the ammonia and nitrite that they are exposed to is moving more slowly. And so they'd probably have a greater likelihood of capturing that ammonia or nitrite while it is in their direct micro environment. So the bottom line is I have never noticed a difference whether you have a heavy flow filter or a low flow filter in regard to biological filtration. Also keeping in mind the rest of the surfaces in your aquarium are acting as biological filtration where beneficial microbes are growing all over them. And if the fish are producing ammonia, that ammonia is diffusing out into the water in a random way. And so the more the ammonia is captured by the microbes, the more the rest of that ammonia is diffusing out into the rest of the water volume. So I don't think that actually matters in terms of flow and biological filtration. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree 100% in my experience. You will notice a difference if you have 36 yellow labs in there. You're going to notice a difference with the particles floating around because there's not as much water being processed by the filter. It's not picking up all of those particles, but, but from a biological standpoint, yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, you're, you're much well-versed in the science behind it. I love the, and as long as I've been doing this, I, I, this is why I have you on here because you're teaching me things. It had never really occurred to me Water moving slower, it's easier for that bacteria to grab a hold of it as it's going by. That's that's a great way of looking at it. And I'm going to figure out a really good analogy to use <laughs> that on. But but this, again, goes back to what I was saying. You have that freedom. If you go with that filter that's a little larger, you have that freedom of being able to turn it down. And now you've turned it down to where your fish aren't being blown away. And you're now at the kind of same level as you would be if you bought the 55, but instead you have a 75 that's turned down, you know, you have those options. And if you change your mind and you get rid of your angelfish, which shame on you, they're absolutely gorgeous. And you put in the Imbunas. Now you can turn that bad boy up. You don't have to go and buy a new filter for it. If it's a four foot tank and you're putting Imbunas in there, you probably are going to want to go the double filter route. But, uh, you know, Maybe we just discovered another topic idea of, you know, what filtration for what fish. Maybe in your 100 topics that you put up already, maybe that's already in there. But Well, uh, I, I have a good. secret for you. If you ever, if for those of you watching on YouTube, if you ever see me look down and it looks like I'm not paying attention, that's not it at all. I've actually added a couple topics to our topics list <laughs> just going through this conversation. So if you ever... Yeah, don't think I'm just like disrespectful. Like, oh, what is he texting somebody? No, no, I just came up with two more things I'm adding to our list as we go through this conversation. So I'm glad you brought that up because when you're talking, a lot of times I'm looking at my screen. And so it's like I'm looking at you face to face, but yeah. I'm looking down. I mean, how weird would it be if you're sitting there talking and I'm just staring at the camera like this the whole time? Dude, I mean, that would just. That. You're creeping me out, bro. <laughs> exactly. That would be weird. Uh, but. But yeah, I mean, all the more reason, again, to uh, to go with a larger filter or go the double route uh, and definitely make a note of that. What filtration for what types of fish? Um, now, I, I have a question for you. I know okay. you're just about ready to say something and hold that thought. We've talked a lot about hang on back filters and, and how awesome they are and stuff. But do you see downsides to them? Oh, um, <laughs> there, there is sure. Yeah, of course. Um, now my downsides to them are going to be 
when we talk about, and we can just get right into it now, when we talk about the different styles of filtration, um, a great example would be if you are using a sponge filter and you live in a house like Lisa and I used to live in where the power goes out all the time. Sometimes it might go out for five minutes and then it comes back on or it's out for an hour and a half and you're at work and you don't even realize this has happened. If you got a sponge filter in there, the second that power comes back on, it's going to kick back on and everything's going to be hunky dory. Whereas some, I know we're going to go in depth in this down the road, but or uh, farther along in this episode, some hang on the back filters will not restart when the power comes back on. It's just a fact. There are some that are worse than others. Um, so in that kind of a situation, absolutely, I could see that there being a downside. Another downside that I would see is if, and I'm in this industry and I might get in trouble uh, for saying this, if you follow the manufacturer's recommendations and you replace cartridges once every month, I think you are, I don't think you're hurting the the filter's performance, I think you're hurting your pocketbook in that situation. And I think that that is definitely a downside. Um, but all the things we talked about earlier, when you talk about the efficiency, when you talk about the versatility, uh, we didn't even really talk about the, the versatility you have in adding things to them, you know, putting filter floss in there, adding a bag of purigen. When you talk about the versatility of them from a, uh, mechanical standpoint and bio standpoint the ease of use the ease of maintenance i feel like the pros far outweigh the cons but what do you think absolutely yeah 100 that's why if they're my go-to for anything two and a half to 125 to 150 gallons for sure so yeah i mean you mentioned one thing that is it is an important thing because i've had it just like you have where you have a power blip it doesn't take oh it was out for two hours it's like it was out for three seconds and there are hang on back filters that you just hear them grinding you hear that noise mm -hmm. like oh great it hasn't been running who knows how long that hasn't been running for the other thing is it's rare it's very rare but in terms of putting water on the floor it is possible that a hang on back filter could overflow out of the back where air driven systems for the most part especially if you're using a check valve where you have your pump above the actual water line that's not going to happen right it's just right. it's it's not a it's not physically it's not possible. possible for yeah. that to happen so i have had that happen where i've had hang on back filters more than once put significant amount of water on the floor which was not happy it was always the same brand of filter unfortunately but it did do it there are some people who don't like hang on back filters because when you really look at the water flow there is an inherent flaw in a hang on back filter just by design it's that all of them have it there's nothing you can do about it and that is when the water is being taken into the intake it goes straight up goes into the filter it comes straight back down and so when it comes to overall water circulation i mean you again you've got that big 360 behind you you've got the stump and i can see in, in the picture you've got an intake and a return on opposite sides of the aquarium you're getting fantastic water flow even though you you know you mentioned you have some issues there with just because of the substrate you know things falling in the substrate but you're doing the best possible job you can in regard to water flow same thing with a canister filter where you've got those intakes and returns hopefully on opposite sides of the aquarium where mm -hmm. filters unless you really come up with some ingenious way to put an elbow in and then extend your intake yeah way good luck with that <laughs> which if you did that probably would run into problems with the in with the pump being able to suck the, the water in that far but so that that's an inherent problem too is is the fact that your, your water circulation is within the tank which is another reason why i like to use two filters it really is water coming out going back in water coming out it's just doing like a cartwheel in, in some cases yeah i'm really glad that you brought that up because that that is something that i should have thought of yes you really only got water coming in and coming out from one location uh you know you may need to in certain situations add something to circulate that water through that's a very good point but here here's another one that i thought of while you were talking and I, this is this is a thing for a lot of people, and I don't blame them. There are a lot of people that want to keep everything contained within the aquarium. And the concept of taking water from that aquarium and taking it outside of that glass box, even though it's right there, and processing the water and then sending it back in, that's, that's a nightmare. That is the potential for leaks. That's, I want all of the water to be inside of the aquarium. 
I can totally understand that argument. I don't, I mean, I, I understand it, I, but I choose to do it the way that scares those people. I don't think, I mean, we have some tanks that have the internal sump filtration on them, but you know, all of my tanks, the water's coming out and it's just doing its thing. And you know, it is what it is, but, um, but yeah, that would be the only other con that I would think to them. Uh, you know, the lack of circulation throughout the entire tank, uh, the, the power outage thing, and then the, um, taking water out of the aquarium. And we're going to get into that power outage thing again in a minute, but I did touch on it a second ago, options for media. Mm. Um, yep. now a lot of your hang on the backs, particularly the ones that come with starter kits, your top fins, your aquions, your penguins. Um, those are all good filters. We, uh, the Tetras are this way. They come with the replaceable cartridge. You pull it out, you put it back in. Uh, I personally, I think those are fine. I think if you're starting out in this hobby, you buy a starter kit, it comes with those. I think you're doing fine. I prefer, again, if I'm the guy that's being asked, how do I set up an aquarium from scratch? I'm going to opt for a hang on the back filter that has wide open spaces for me to play around with if I want to. I mean, I don't always do it. A lot of times I just roll with what comes in the box. But if I want to add that matrix or I want to add the matrix carbon or something to put in there, I am a user of carbon in a lot of situations. I know some people poo poo that. I'm not one of them. I, I like it in certain circumstances. But to be able to have that versatility, uh, I, I think that is a huge bonus for Hang on the Backs. What are your preferred options for media? I know you're a big polyfill guy, aren't you? Yeah, huge. Um, the, the blue bonded sheet in particular, it's the it's the filter floss that has the blue side and the, the white side. Yep. And the reason I like that, it's a little bit more expensive than just, oh, I, I use some pillow stuffing or something like that. That's fine. It's super cheap, but that stuff gets wet and it really starts to bog down and kind of fall apart. In every single hang on back filter we have, if you see that in our fish room, it is strictly, it's really there for mechanical filtration, uh, getting stuff out of the water. And so it doesn't matter what the brand is. Every single brand has a compartment and every single brand you can convert you never need those cartridges. Now you can use them. And if you like spending extra money on them, by all means, continue to do that. But what we do is depending on the way that we situate it in the filter might be different depending on the, the flow through the compartment itself, but it's always fine sponge and the blue bonded sheet because that, that blue bonded filter floss, you can take that out and put it in the sink. We just rinse it out and, and tap water, squeeze it a few times, make sure that the brown water is not coming out anymore. And right back in the filter it goes and we can reuse that stuff for months before it really starts to lose its overall shape and ability to just maintain itself upright and the filter compartment itself. So that the, the polyfill type stuff is fine, but like I said, once you pull that out after a week or two, it's just kind of sagging and you squeeze it out. It's it's a little bit harder to get that back into the aquarium and have it do its job of mechanical filtration. But that, that's all we use. And you, you know, you mentioned carbon purigen. I don't use it. It's not because I'm against it or anything. It's just I for the tanks that we have, I've never found it to to be necessary for us. Although I will say in the canister filters we just set up, it's in there just because it came with them. Like, oh, I'll just leave it in there. There's so much capacity in those things anyway. Why not? Right. But uh, for the hang on backs, it's all fine sponge and it's the, it's the, that blue bonded sheet for the most part. I mean, we do have some of the polyfill stuff. We use it when we run out of the other stuff, but that's what we do. I like to use carbon in tanks that have heavy hitters. I, I refer to fish that produce big waste and, and eat big yeah. amounts of food and do a lot of fighting. I produce, I can, so I call those heavy hitters. If I have a tank like the one behind me, like the two across from me that are each 240 gallons, both housing uh, large amounts of African cichlids, I've always been somebody that uses carbon in tanks like that. I feel maybe it's, I'm just old school, I don't know, but I feel like it keeps things just a little bit more crisp, keeps things more <laughs> under control. I don't walk in here and smell fish when I'm in the fish room. And, you know, I could just be, just brainwashed into believing this, but I've always felt like the carbon is, is one of the things that, that helps me out with that. Uh, the polyfill, I gotta be honest. I'm not a fan. 
Uh, it, does it work? Oh yeah, it works really well. If you have people coming over and you want to impress them with your tank and you don't want all those little bits and particles floating around, it'll pick that stuff up really, really fast. But like you said, when you go to clean it out, not only is it heavy and gross and it's like you're picking up a something nasty, yeah. it gets everywhere. And it yeah. seeps down into the filter and it's hard to get it all out. And then, you know, you might de risk it getting into the impeller and just binding it up. And I, I, I'm just not a fan of the messiness of it. If you had a better way of containing polyfill, then I would uh, I would certainly say, yeah, because it, it does do a really good job. It does not last very long if it does its job properly. But I, I just, it's just too messy for me. I, I'm not a, a big, big fan of that. But let's get into the controversy now, which to me, it. it's not controversial at all. To no. me, it's the biggest no brainer in the history of hang on back filters. And uh, you've been in this hobby longer than I have. I can remember when this, this was not a thing. And when it came out and became a thing, I was like, why hasn't this been a thing the whole time? And that is removing the pump from the filter box itself and putting it into the aquarium. It's the biggest no-brainer of all time. And, and it's such a no-brainer. All the big manufacturers, except one, are going to that. Yeah. Uh, that one manufacturer should move to that. Uh, Without a doubt. Because they are the one that has the biggest problem with them restarting. Um, and and I'm, I'm not trying to throw shade at that manufacturer. It's a great manufacturer. It's Rolls-Royce manufacturer but just with that that one fatal flaw in that filter it, it for somebody who's not familiar with hang on back filters what we're talking about is when you have a hang on the back filter that has a pump that's in the filter box itself it's outside of the aquarium what that pump is needing to do is draw the water from the tank itself you might not think that would be too, too difficult to do because it's right there and it's a small volume of water. But what you're asking it to do is pull water all the way from the bottom of the aquarium up through that tube and pull it into the filter box itself. These pumps, even though they say however many gallons per hour, they are not extraordinarily powerful pumps. They're not meant to be this mass water moving cyclone producing pumps and so if it's back there like that it works as long as it's working <laughs> if yeah. if like we said if the power goes out the water line drops the the water in the intake tube drops and when the power comes back on or you're doing maintenance and you plug it back in sometimes it's not going to want to to pull hard enough to draw that water back in it's a mm -hmm. simple fix. You pour a cup of water in there and you move on. It's no big deal. But if you're not home because you went out to dinner or you went to play on in a dart league on a Monday night with your wife and you come home and the power was out when you were gone, I, listen, the AquaClear from Fluval is notorious for this. I love Fluval. I'm one of the biggest Fluval fanboys on this planet. I've got, I don't even know how many Fluval filters in this fish room right now best canister filter on the market in my opinion but that filter for me in my experience and i've heard from a lot of others too is absolutely notorious for that we were running probably 20 aqua clear filters in our fish room when we had it in our garage and if we were at work and came home and the power was out none of the 20 would have restarted again and i don't mean to only single out fluval here because there's other brands too that have the same situation and they just don't want to kick back on when the power comes on. Uh, again, if you're there, not a big deal. But if you're not, it could be a big deal if you're gone for a while. Instead, the better option, and I agree with you. You said it earlier. I could not agree more. The two most important factors that you have to consider with a hang on the back filter, as far as the options that they have, is one, the flow control which all of them have. And the second is that that pump be in the aquarium. This way it's submerged. And all it's doing now is pushing water back to the box. Doesn't take a lot of power to do that way more efficient. And if the power goes out and comes back on, boom, 
it instantaneously starts back up again. You don't even have to fill the filter up with water when you start it for the first time. It'll fill itself up. It's absolutely brilliant. All of the manufacturers are going that route. And I can't believe that Fluval's not working on a redesign of the AquaClear where they're going to do that because they know it's the right thing to do. That to me, if it doesn't have the pump in the aquarium, that's a deal breaker. 100%. I, I agree with everything you said. And I will second that 0% of the time does my AquaClear restart on its own after tank maintenance or a power outage. 0% of the time without refilling the back compartment. It has never happened ever. And we've got, I've had everything from the AquaClear 20s to the Aqu AquaClear 110s. Not one of those filters has ever after, and again, taking the tank down, doing a water change where the intake is like, okay, it's now empty because you're going further than the, in, the original intake. You know, if you're doing a, a decent sized water change, never, not once. It, if you forget, you'll just hear the, that little grinding thing. And then you got, oh, here's a couple cups of water, depending on the size of the, the compartment. And then it goes and it's fine. Yep. And I can also tell you 100% of the time, without fail, every single time I've ever done maintenance, where there's ever been a power outage, all of the filters that have the internal internal uh, impeller and pump that's actually in the tank have always restarted. I've never had a situation where after a power outage or after a fish tank maintenance where we've re plugged those filters back in where they just didn't start pumping out water two seconds later. It has never yeah. happened. So when you have something that happens 0% of the time, a filter restarting, and a filter type that happens 100% of the time of always restarting, that's a pretty strong indication that maybe that is actual reality. So uh, yeah, it, it is, like you said, the thing that every hang on back filter manufacturer should be doing. And you mentioned, you know, and we'll get into the brands like the Seachem titles, the Marine Land Pros, the Aquion Quiet Flows. These all have internals. How the AquaClear has not moved to that, given their reputation over the last 30 years, they're, they're really behind the time. I mean, in terms of, of the, the, the latest technology, right. and then, let's face it, when it comes to filtration, we're, we're maxed out in terms of technology that's probably going to happen in aquarium filtration. Everything right. that could be done in a filter has been done because all you're doing is you're just moving water to trap right. stuff or allow for microbes to do their thing. That's it. It's all the same thing. It doesn't matter what type of filter you're talking about. So there's those small things and those are the two. Yeah, for sure. Adjusting yeah. flow. And by the way, when it comes to adjusting flow, you also mentioned that some filters have a theoretical flow adjustment that doesn't necessarily mean they actually do that to any extent either. So some are much better than others. Well, and, and unfortunately, this is another one that applies directly to yeah. the Fluval, the, the AquaClear. Now, listen, I am a Fluval fanboy. And other yeah. than the kind of lackluster, unimpressive flow control, it's there, but it's, it's not the it's, best. Yeah. And the pump being in the water. I would tell you that the AquaClear is one of the better filters mm -hmm. on the market as long as you're okay with those two things. Right. Um, it has its other flaws too, but all of them have flaws of some type. But when you look at that filter, that's one of the ones that has that endless opportunity for versatility and expansion. Mm -hmm. And you got this big basket. And as you get the larger filter, it's going to have a bigger basket and you can, you can do anything. You can put a small child in the <laughs> basket. In of the, the, 110. the one, Yeah. I mean, it's like a suitcase yeah. on the back of the tank. Uh, yeah. So for that, they're great. And they do a wonderful job of processing the water. I just, I won't buy them again because of those other two things. And because yeah. my favorite filter exists. And, but before we get into our favorites, I think we might have the same favorite. But yeah. I want to I wanna ask you about one thing. Uh, because you're much more well-versed in the science behind. Uh, you have a... a, a um, what do you call it? A undergrad in fish health or what do you, what do you call it? Well, so I did, well, I did two things. I have a master's in biotechnology and chemical science and then a master's cert in aquaculture and fish health, which I forgot to mention in the first episode, but yeah, kind I went important. and did, through the, yeah, the university of Florida, I did a, a master's cert in aquaculture and fish health as well. So then you can, you're the absolute perfect person to ask this. There have been some 
rumblings uh, on the, the old internet.com where there, there's people that don't like the idea of the pump being in the water column itself, being in the aquarium because of the vibration and the, the heat produced and stuff like that, which who could ever complain about heat being produced in their aquarium for free? Uh, well, not for free, but you know what I'm saying. No. How do you feel about that, about the, the vibration? Uh, because I, I'd like to answer it before I turn it over to you. I feel like the vibration's there regardless of if the tank is in the, if the pump's in the back or in the tank. Uh, I, I don't see that as an issue, but I'd love to get your thoughts on is the vibration an issue that's being caused by that pump being in the aquarium? So, and, I, and I've heard that, not so much an argument against, but just a question, like a legitimate, and it is a legitimate question, by the way. Sure. People who ask that, that they're, it shows me they're thinking. It shows me that, hey, you know, um, I, I recognize that these things do, motors move and they create vibrations. You are right in the, in the sense that all filters create something. So, if we're worried about the first, so first of all, let's just answer the question. Does the vibration of the internal pump actually impact fish health and happiness? Well, I don't know. I can't ask a fish how happy they are. <laughs> I don't think any scientific studies have been done to measure the vibrations. At least I have not seen them. And by all means, if you are somebody who's rummaging through uh, aquarium science somewhere and you've got a peer reviewed science article, not just bro science where someone has been like, Oh yeah, I, I, I think it's bad. <laughs> I'm not talking about bro science. I'm talking about peer reviewed journal articles in a science publication. By all means, let us know that in the comments section of, of the YouTube portion, but I have seen nothing compelling, at least in my own, in my own fish room that would say, Oh, wow, these fish are behaving differently. Their life is, you know, the life expectancy has been reduced. They're more prone to health issues. They're not acting, you know, normally. They're not schooling properly. They're, none of that stuff has, has been evident in anything. And that's pretty much all we keep at this point when it comes to hang on back filters are those brands that have those features because that's what I prefer with some exceptions. So that's to me, not an issue, but you did mention something else. There is going to be some vibration. I don't think it'll be nearly as much because that motor, the way that the motors are on the aqua clears or the old penguin filters or the touch, uh, the Tetra whispers or something like that, they're, they're outside of the actual compartment itself. And so as the water's coming up the intake, it's getting pulled through that impeller that's spinning. And then it's kind of going out this way. And that housing is actually sitting outside the the filter box itself so right. that would dissipate a lot of the vibration so I, I i'm not claiming that the vibration is going to be significantly less or, or even the same in those two filter types but what i am saying is i don't think the vibration matters i think if you're really looking at the noise level if, if that's what we're concerned about the noise level or the the abnormal water movement in aquarium you got to start looking at your sponge filters because to me that is it's not even close i mean people who complain about minor vibrations of a filter housing inside of a you know for a hang on back like the sea chems or the marine lands are the same people who are running fifty thousand sponge filters at full right. blast and the whole thing, blah 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 you yeah. think that's a natural thing that's happening in in nature well show me because that's it's right. not so that is creating tremendously more noise, most likely than any type of vibration would be. Obviously, it's a different, it's a different frequency. I get all that. I'm not discounting that, but in terms of noise disruption and noise pollution in an aquarium, your air-driven systems, it's not even close. It is by far the most noisy of anything. And yet we don't really question that. And I'm not saying we should. I'm not saying that we should question that. But I will say I have been to people's homes and LRB is, is a good example. When I went to his fish room, it was dead quiet. It was eerie. I mean, it freaked me out when I walked in there, a dude with 300 aquariums and not <laughs> a single, there was nothing, no air stones, nothing. It was the most serene, unbelievable thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, holy cow, I don't hear this anything. Is different. <laughs> now, obviously he... And he'd be the first one to tell you this, the, the way that he's stocking his tanks and the way that he's doing things is very, very unlike what the vast majority of fish keepers are doing. It, it's not that he's right and everybody else is wrong or we're right and he's wrong. It's just different, right? right. So he's got different his styles. priorities and a way to do it and it works. But in terms of noise pollution, yeah, I don't think that we can 
say one way or the other. And until I see a peer reviewed scientific study that shows otherwise, I don't think it's an issue. I, I look at it and I, I just like to use common sense. I mean, I am an anti uh, noise from the pump is a problem person. I, I just don't, you know, I don't have the science degrees that you do, but I look at it from a common sense standpoint. Yeah. An aquarium that's sitting in your house is going to get noises from a lot of places, whether it's a fan or, a, you know, vacuum cleaner or a TV or there's noises coming from all over the place. And you want to tell me that a pump that's inside the water that I can't hear anything. I understand I'm not in the water and it's a different thing, but what about if they are in the water? What about in the wild? You've got the stream, the sound running from moving water if they're in a river or if they're in a lake like Lake Malawi, there's motor boats that are going around and all that. I mean, there's noises. These fish don't live in an absolute silent place. Right. I, I can't, in my brain, wrap my head around the idea that the vibration from that would be a problem. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm so dedicated to that, that I will not buy a hang on the back filter unless it has that pump in the water. Yep. And I think that the, um, I think the manufacturers are doing a good thing by, by moving to that. Um, the Penguin Pro is an absolutely amazing filter and the Seacom title. But I want to mention one more thing before we get into our preferred brands. And that is something that you warned me about because I was testing out new hang on the back filters. Um, I have my favorites, but I was entertaining the idea of bringing another filter into my inventory on my website. And I was not gonna bring in a filter that doesn't have the pump in the tank. Since Marineland released the Penguin Pros, I said, let me look into that. And you told me before I even got one, you said, hey, watch out. Because when you put that 450 on the emperor 450 which i actually just learned last night why you have the penguins and why you have the emperor do you know why the emperor is called the emperor instead of the penguins well in terms of the, the names i don't know why they but the emperor does have different features the emperor does have that spray bar that hits the two bio wheels uh, there was another it's been a long time since i reviewed those filters there was something else too oh, obviously the volume because the emperor 450 is the pinnacle and i don't know if they go less than that i don't remember that they do but the penguin line the marine marine land pro penguins are up to 375 and don't have that spray bar the i was told this and i don't know if this is true but this yeah. makes total sense that in nature penguins are penguins but the like leader of the pack the king of the pack of penguins is called the emperor Ah, okay. This is why all of the smaller sense. ones, you've got the penguin, I, and I don't know the numbers. What is it? 275, 375. And yeah, they when changed you, when they updated them. Yeah. And when you get to 275, 375, 450, 175. Yeah. When you get to the biggest of the bunch, it is the king of all. It is the emperor. I thought that was fascinating to yeah. hear that. But there is a flaw with that there filter is. that you warned me of. That filter is actually too big it's too big for a lot of your glass canopies which i don't know anybody that doesn't use glass canopies now i mean maybe you might cut them out of the the material that we use for building greenhouses and stuff if you're going to diy but most people are going to go with the hinged glass lids and yeah. those are it's literally like a 16th of an inch too big Yep. to fit the emperor 450 on there i don't it's know not if it's the emperor it's all of them so oh, is it? yeah I've, I've had them all i've got i mean because i've i think i've reviewed everything from the 175 up to the uh 450 every single one it's not so much the, the slight design flaw in terms of where they place the the pump housing in the intake it sits too high and so it winds up happening it's just something to consider for those of you who do have those glass tops it might be fine depending on the brand of aquarium that you have. But in all cases for us, you can't put the glass tops completely flush. And I mean, it is not a big deal. I don't even notice yeah. it. It's just the front of that glass lip sits up, like, like you said, like a 16th of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch up on the rim of the front part of the aquarium. You just can't push it back all the way. And it's only because that housing sits too far. It sits too high. The other problem with that, not, 
it could be a problem. It shouldn't be, but it certainly can be a problem because ask me how I know. But if you do a water change, now you should always be unplugging your filtration when you're doing a water change. But if you should forget with that particular filter, because, and you, you briefly mentioned this before, it's generating some heat. So that motor is still working. The impeller is still spinning. And so if you lower the water level down where the filter is no, lo no longer has suction, that housing will get extraordinarily hot and so hot where the internal, it's not even the external uh, casing, the internal part of that housing will get so hot it will expand to the point where the impeller, the impeller will no longer spin. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not an impeller issue at that point. It's a motor expansion problem. And the, the area where you would put in the impeller, it, it closes up and the filter shot at that point. So wow. really important. And it's the same way with all, if, if you have a filter that has a motor that is inside the tank, part of that design, at least I know for the Marine lands, they're expecting that the tank water is going to help cool that motor. And if you take that water out and that thing is getting hot, your filter is done. So make sure you unplug all of those internal um, filters that have the, the motor in the actual tank. Yeah, the worst thing for a water pump is to not have water in it. Yeah. And just always know yeah. that. And water pumps are designed to pump water, not air. So never, ever, ever let a water pump uh, stay on while mm -hmm. there's no water in there. Uh, yeah. That I mean, you know, we look at that as common sense, but, you know, some people may not. And we laugh at it, but, you know, it's a common mistake. I mean, people yeah. people do that all the time. And it's uh, not as big of a problem with the other types of hanging backs like the aqua clears and the tetras because the water isn't fully leaving the water compartment. So there's still water there where the heat can dissipate. Uh, very rarely does it go completely empty. In fact, it almost never happens. But with that filter, because your pump is now in midair, it's always going to happen. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, the last thing to touch on, and then we will get into what our favorites are. I'm going to let you say what your favorite is, because anybody that knows me knows what mine is. I think yours might be the same, but uh, we do have to touch on cost. Um, but I don't think much time really needs to be spent on it. I don't know. You may disagree, but in the fish keeping hobby, there is no better example of you get what you pay for. Regardless if we're talking sure. about heaters, lights, aquariums themselves, uh, filtration, fish, <laughs> you get what you pay for. And it's no different with these. You know, the more you spend on a filter, the more options you're going to get, the more mm -hmm. powerful pumps you're going to get, the more versatility you're going to get. Everything ramps up. If you can only afford one of the, I don't even want to call them lower end, but one of the lesser expensive versions... That's fine. It's going to be fine for you. Uh, but w I would say this is one of the most important devices on your aquarium. Don't let this be where you skimp. Yeah. Pay the money. Uh, and, and the thing is, to get, uh, let's, let's use AquaClear because we don't want to spoil the surprise. If you get an AquaClear 110 and you compare that to a Tetra, whatever their largest one is, you're talking about a price difference of what, you know, maybe 20 bucks. Yeah. It's not like we're talking about a Kia versus a Rolls Royce. I mean, you're not tripling the cost. Y you know, if it, if it means pick up an extra shift or wait an extra few days, uh, wait for that bonus to come in, pay that extra $20, get the one that's better. And You'll be so glad you did. Your fish will be glad you did. Everybody involved will be glad you did. And on that note, or, or I don't know, do you do you have anything to add to that? I don't know. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I would. There is a zero percent chance I would go on Amazon and buy some off-brand hang-on back filter. It is not happening oh, no. because it's just not worth the problem. So even if it is a, a hang-on back filter where you're you're getting a name brand that has a long reputation in the hobby, and even if you're spending that extra twenty bucks, which is by the way is probably I think you nailed it. That's about the most the price difference is going to be within within that size filter right and i'm paying that because long run if you look at four or five years down the road if you're buying some off brand that's just off amazon of some thing you never heard of you're probably going to be replacing that filter after 12 months anyway and therefore right. you will be you'll be out money so do it right from the first time and the, the problem is if the filter goes down it's not just the cost of the filter. You've probably killed a bunch of fish too. So True. it's just not worth it. It's it, buy something that is, is going to 
be around for a decade or two decades. I mean, you're already spending you know, $300 on the tank. You're spending, you know, $70, $80 on a fancy light to go on that tank. You yeah. got that air pump with the treasure chest that blows the bubbles up and Jack Sparrow pops out of it. And you've got this f expensive eco-complete substrate and you put all this money into it and then you're going to be desperate to, to save $20 on a filter. Yeah. Don't do that. Wait until you can do it right. Spend the extra $20. I don't care what brand you get. Right. We're going to tell you what our favorites are, but, you know, spend the money. You're, you're buying the engine for your aquarium. You don't want to go cheap on that. Jason Adams, Professor Adams, what is your favorite brand? Or you can say specific title. If you I'm were going to go count. buy. So let me do a countdown. I'm going to give you probably my, my top three. Let's okay. say from three, two, one, I'm gonna go three, two, one, just to keep it interesting. It's a countdown here. I everybody. love it. I'm, a, I'm anxious. I can't wait. <laughs> Obviously from everything we've talked about so far, it's going to be, you've probably got an idea of the, the brands that I like, but I actually do not mind the aqua clear, despite the fact that it's missing one and a half of the, the things <laughs> that I want. So it does not have the internal fill, the internal motor wish it did. The adjustable flow, we've kind of hinted at already, but let's just say it. The adjustable flow on that is a joke compared to the other filters that actually truly have an adjustable flow. But in defense of that filter, it is a filter that has some, some years behind it, some longevity, customer service. It's got those things. And so I'd still put it at number three, even though it's missing some of those things. But I will say it's a distant number three. Like it's not close. Right. Um, the next filter on that i'd say the number two and this is again a lot of people are like seriously dude I, I do like the marine land pros i think it was a big step for them when they did shift the motor into the actual aquarium and their adjustable flow actually matters mm -hmm. keep in mind i'm not a fanboy i can i i don't really i don't have a whole lot of emotional uh, you know, baggage with the, any of these filters. I, I, I'm not going to get emotionally tied up if someone in a comment section of a YouTube video says, man, you're the worst. And it leaves me, a, it leaves us a five paragraph dissertation on why my opinion is horrible. I don't care. I'm telling you that right now, right. leave the comment there, but I will not care. It will not impact me emotionally in any way because I don't get emotional about fish tank equipment. Okay. So it's not like an Apple phone. Those are the best. No, I'm kidding. I, I mean, they are, but I'm not going to get emotional. We all know they are. That. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but anyway, the aqua clears are fine. I do like the Marine land po pro as a number two. The, the only thing I don't like about that, and what I was going to mention is I've done videos on why I hate certain features of certain filters and the Marine land pros are great, but that bio wheel is the dumbest thing. I wish they'd get rid of it. It absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I will maintain forever. It serves no real life purpose other than to make people mad and wonder if their filter is broken. Yeah. Marine land. If you're ever listening, get rid of the bio wheels. They're unnecessary. You know that. I know that it's a great marketing ploy, but it is wholly and completely unnecessary. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> I like them. I, they run. The old penguins I had, the old 350s and the 250s, literally 20 years. And I'm like, yep, I've still too. got some in a tote downstairs as backups. They're crusty. They're ugly. They're na I don't even know if I've got like the bottom intake, like the last half of it. It doesn't matter. But if I needed something to move water, I could pull those out of the box. They haven't been running in probably two or three years. Boom, fill the back up with water. They just go. My favorite, and this is where I think we're going to share some commonality, the Seachem titles. Because now what you're getting there is you're getting a company that actually has you know a high level of uh, quality control. You're getting a filter that has the, the features that I really love. So you're getting that internal motor. You're getting the adjustable flow that actually matters. You're getting a, f a filter compartment that I think is actually the easiest to deal with. I know the aqua clears have the part that you can pull up, but then your filter stuff can actually fall at the front of the back as you're pulling that out of there. True. The, the Seachem title line, when you pull that basket out, there's not really an opportunity for that to happen. So I definitely like that. The, the water flow through the filter is very similar to the aqua clears where it's starting at the bottom and working its way through the top. Unlike the Marine land pro. And I get that where it's going, it's going back to front, mm -hmm. by the way, I have not found that to matter in any filter. If you, if you stock the media, stack the media the right way, I don't think it matters. The downside to the sea chem title for, that you hear from people is, oh, the by it bypasses too easily. I have found that that's not an issue when you leave that sponge that comes with the, the filter compartment. 
but then I stack my blue bonded sheet vertically. All right, so I stack I stack it uh, vertically, and then the that overflow thing almost never happens unless the media is like totally clogged. And guess what? Right. The filter's telling you, "Hey, I did my job. It's time for you to do yours." Right. Uh, the one downside and the one thing that I wish that Seachem would do with the smaller filter, the Seachem Title 35, is you need an intake on that thing. The, mm -hmm. the fact that there there is no intake makes that filter, in my opinion, only good for a very short tank. So, but. I, I, those filters have been flawless. They've never, ever, I've never come down into the fish room and I've got everything from the 35 up to the 110. I've, I've reviewed every single size as you have. I've used long-term every single size. And I can say without question, I have never, ever, ever, ever walked into my fish room and had one of those things like, why is that thing not running? Right. <laughs> so, which yep. I can't say for the aqua clears where I walked down, like you said, a power blip, you know, one of the kids, uh, when they're doing maintenance, they forgot to put water in the back of the thing. And like, oh, okay, well, that thing hasn't been running for a day uh, or, or 12 hours. But so that that's my that's my lineup. You know, I, I almost feel like I have to change things up from you simply just for comfort, for controversy Do purposes. It, man. <laughs> Be controversial. Let's disagree. Let's let's duke it out here. Well, here's the thing. I did a series. I talked about it earlier a couple of years ago uh, where I reviewed uh, the, the Tetra Whisper, the Top Fin, Aquion, um, Aqua Clear, Penguin, and Titles. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what the, the first three were, but my top three at that time, and this was before I even started my website back up again, so I was not trying to make sales. My top three was Penguin 3, Aqua Clear 2, and Title 1. But that okay. changes now. Uh, and this is not for, for controversy purposes. Uh, I love Fluval, but Fluval is out now. Um, for the exact reasons that you talked about, uh, you know, for the, we, I don't need to beat a dead horse. We know why I would take it off. Doesn't mean it's a bad filter. It would be number four for me now. Uh, when I did the reviews of all of these filters, the Penguin Pros were not out yet. So, my my order would change now. This will surprise you. Aquion would be number three for me. The quiet Over, flows. Yeah, quiet flow. Very solid filter. Very, absolutely. That would be number three over the Fluval Aqua Clear. If Fluval, if Hagen was to get their thumb out of their butts and put that pump in the water, it would instantaneously go back to number two. Uh, but for now, it would be AquaClear 3, Penguin Pro 2, and, of course, the Seachem title number one. Uh, and you know what? You did such a good job explaining why those are your top threes. Uh, for As far as the Penguins go and the titles, 100%. Uh, what, what you said applies to me, too. Um, but... I'm putting the uh, the aqua. Excuse me. I'm getting confused now. I'm putting the aqua on ahead of the aqua clear aqua. because of that pump being in there. Because even though this is one of those brands that people look at as one of the lesser brands, which I don't believe. I think they're at the same mm -hmm. level as a Marine Land. Are they up at the Seachem Fluval level? No, but I think they're at the same level as a Marine Land. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think they're low end by any stretch. They, they just work. They work very well. They're workhorses. They got that pump in the water. Um, and they, you know, you don't have as many options for media as you do with the, the aqua clears and the titles, but, uh, I do like simplicity and I like things that are going to keep fish keepers in the hobby. And if that means having a simple remove the cartridge and replace it, you and I don't do that. But if that's what it takes to keep someone in this hobby, I'd rather they do that. And I'd rather them get one of those over the, the aqua clears or I did it. Yeah. The aqua clear. I did say yeah, it right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. geez. <laughs> Uh, you know, we're going to have to redo this episode again down the road because you and yeah. I both know there is no way Fluval is going to keep things the way they are. I keep thinking that, but I mean, how long have the titles and the Marine Land Pro, the Marine Land Pros came out. I remember Marine Land approaching me and saying, hey, we want to send you some of these new filters we have. And at Aquatic Experience 2019, they weren't on the market yet. They sent me these things. I had been long-term testing them and they waited 
at that point, six months to a year before they ever hit the market. And I had had these things in my fish room for a while. And so I shared with them some of the things that we talked about here. So it's been 2019, 2019 for Marine Land. So the Seachem title, I don't know when that came out, but it, it was already out. Yeah, it's been out for a while. So we're already talking about five years. So it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, you would think by now, even if you don't call it the Aqua Clear whatever you call it the you know maybe you give it a new you, you keep the old ones out there just in case you're a little bit afraid to to actually change over everything and and not have the old ones keep the old ones just like marineland still has the penguins out there floating around uh they there was a transition period do the same but get get something new out there you know as you were talking i was thinking too that people very rarely ever consider the aqua clear the actual filter box is very very wide like front to back that's so true. when you're when you're switching over, the nice thing that I like about the Seachem titles and the Marineland Pros is the the filter box is narrow. So when you're talking about distance between the aquarium and the wall, that matters because if you're sure. running a Marineland Pro or even the the uh, the Whispers or the the Aquions, they they tend to be very thin, which mm -hmm. can it's fine. Right? You got more than enough capacity for the biological and even mechanical filtration, but the Seachems are narrow, but then you put that big honking, you know, Seachem title 75 or 110 on your tank. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't have the space. I got to move my tank away from the wall more. Keep that in mind because sure. they are a thicker front to back filter wider. Well, and there are people that have their aquariums in a room where if you have to pull that tank away from the wall, two more inches, it's going to completely change the look of the room. I've been yeah. there. I know that. And, and that's, yeah. yeah, that's a real thing. Um, as far as, you know, things to change, you know, my number one, like I said, is the, is, and always will be until somebody redesigns this one, uh, it's going to be the title. And I, I agree with you. The only things I would change would be, uh, that, that intake tube on the 35. I, I don't understand why it is that way on the 35. I wish it was just consistent with what the other ones are. Um, yeah. and, and I would not, I, I don't think it's necessary I don't want them to do it because I happen to think it's a feature that I enjoy. Uh, it wouldn't break my heart if they got rid of the skimmer. Oh, I was uh, just going to say that when you were talking like, oh my gosh, that was the other major thing I don't like about the Seacombs is that's because again, go back. I'm sure because you've got the, the retail site. When you look at reviews, it's always this thing is making noise and it's 100, almost 100% 100 of the time, 99% of the time it's the, the person probably hasn't filled their tank up high enough or the filter itself is not sitting low enough on the frame of the aquarium itself. And so too much of that surface skimmer is exposed and it's making that right. gurgling noise And it. Again, it's a feat. Just like I was rough on the Marine land about their ridiculous bio wheels. I'm going to be rough on you guys. See Kim, cause that stupid surface skimmer in a freshwater setup is not only 100% unnecessary, but it's contributing to 90% of your bad reviews. Yeah, Stop. that's true. Get rid of it. It's stupid. And that's why I would like to, if it went away, it wouldn't break my heart because it's not that I'm complaining about it. If yeah. the filter's set up right, the skimmer's not a problem and you can turn it off. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, it, you know, if you're using it right, it won't be an issue. But all of the complaints, there, the only two complaints are the, uh, the skimmer and the bypass, both yeah. of which, if you're operating the filter properly, will not be an issue. So yeah. that's not necessarily an issue with the filter. It's more user error. But if they got rid of the skimmer, I, I would not be brokenhearted. But I've been told by the heir apparent to Seachem, the son of the majority stakeholder in Seachem, that the reason why it's there is because uh, so many of their European customers want that skimmer. Uh, that's a thing over there, apparently, uh, where it's not as popular here but over there it is. And, you know, Seachem is a global brand uh, manufactured by Seachem or CJ in Europe. Uh, and so they have to cater to what the whole world needs, not just our selfish aqu uh, American aquarium needs. And so that's why they do that. But, yeah. you know, and maybe if, it's just like what the Aqua clears. It's a matter of coming up with a second brand option where it's the exact. This is not going to cost a ton of money. Where well, if you Google come up has with that though, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but they have another filter that just oh, never yeah. really took off. I don't even know the name of it. It's yeah. Well, they got the C it's the C I, I did a review on that. It's the, it's the C seven or whatever that thing is. I don't remember 
um, yeah, the Fluval does, but it's not an internal pump, which makes it irrelevant. It's, it's a, like right. a cheaper version of the AquaClear. But it, yeah, Seachem just came up with, okay, all we're going to do is if we've got a run of a thousand Title 110s, we're going to put our, whatever the percentage works out to be sales-wise with a surface skimmer. And then we're going to remove that, that opening, put a piece of plastic over that. And there might be a little bit of internals that you have to work through, but then we'll have our, our other version of it. Yeah, you would have one less knob because you wouldn't have the, yeah. the flow control for the skimmer knob on there. You would have, yeah, I mean, I don't think it would change the pump. I think they could use the same pump internally. I'm sure they would have to direct the water a different way. Yeah, maybe it would even decrease yeah. the price by a couple dollars. I, I think that that would be a good thing. I'm going to tell you, and then we're going to have to wrap this up because we're going on an hour and a half here already. I know I've not been told this. I just... I can look at it and I know why Fluval's doing what they're doing. I know why they have not changed the aqua clear. It's because people are still buying them the way they are. Sure. If you, I can remember buying aqua clears that were still under the name Hagen in 2010. Uh, and they were, they had been around for 20 years by then. I mean, it's not exactly a new filter. I set up my first, uh, in 2013, I was one of the first to get one of the brand new FX6s when they just came out. And again, 11 years later, when you look at the FX6, what did they do? They put a little something, they added a little thing to the lid or something like a minor adjustment to it. It's the same filter that it was back then. The thing is, if people are buying it the way it is, why change it? If it ain't broke, right. don't fix it. And I think that's a flawed strategy because you make those changes and you instantly become a contender for the number one filter. And you'd basically dominate the filter market because you got the best canister. Now you got the, to me, it would be a genius move to do. But I know knowing a lot of people in the corporate world of these big brands that it does, it takes a long time. When I started my website up in uh, 2020, I started it back up again. I was talking with our, a mutual friend of ours, Jay Wilson, who's a national sales rep for, uh, for CJ. He was telling me about the shark pros then in mm -hmm. July of 2020, because I reached out to him and I said, Hey, listen, I just bought one of those shark ADVs. I love that thing. I want to have them for sale on my website. And so Jay's the guy to talk to for that. And he was telling me then, dude, you're not going to believe this. A new, a new version of this is coming out. It's in development yeah. now. Three years later, <laughs> it released. So these things take a long time. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, maybe that's why I'm not super rich uh, because I don't, you know, I just say put You're it out. all the electrical <laughs> engineers and hydrodynamic engineers. And <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I get it. it. It does. It takes a long time. But, you know, yeah, I, I think we, I think we've pretty much, when it comes to hang on back filters, we covered a lot today. We really did. We went through a lot of stuff. Who'd have thought we could go for an hour and a half on hang on the back filters, but I'm going to tell oh, you I this right we now. Go for an hour and a half. I mean, if, if you let it roll, we could talk a lot more. It's just, yeah, I, I think at this point for most people, you've, you've got a lot to think about, some things to ponder. Love to hear from you guys, in the especially on the YouTube side of things. If you are you know, watching it on, on YouTube and you've got, or even if not, if you wind up on the YouTube side of it and you want to leave comments, your opinions, <clears throat> love hearing them. So definitely yeah. leave your thoughts there. We want to hear from you because we will select a comment every week. We don't have them yet because the, the first episode hasn't even uploaded onto the YouTube channel yet. But when we do start getting those and the comments start coming in, we're going to start addressing one, maybe two comments in each episode, as long as it's not a comment or a topic like we did today, where we go for an hour and a half without stopping, I'm going to tell you this, yeah. this is I'm, from the bottom of my heart. I've enjoyed every single minute of this conversation. Yeah. It has been yeah, an absolute awesome. blast. Uh, it's been a treat and you know, we could keep going, but these people don't have all day. They've already made it to Absolutely. work. They got to go in. They're late for work. They got to go in. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and cut it off here, folks. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I really appreciate, and I know Jason does too, that Absolutely. you've joined us 
today. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do us the favor. If you're on the YouTube version, subscribe to the channel, click the like, do all the YouTube things. If you're listening to this on in podcast form, Spotify, Apple, leave us a review. You know, that definitely helps to spread the word about this and, you know, bring us up to where when you type in aquarium into the search, we're going to pop up for folks that are like you and want to hear stuff like this. So it would mean a lot to us if you did that. I don't have any more to, th to say. Professor? Well, everybody have a great week and we will see you next week. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.